Hello and welcome to the Silver Lining series, where I discuss the silver lining of a news cycle that is full of trash and chaos. This week we had the latest on the Australian bushfire crisis, the individuals and companies doing their bit for those less fortunate during the current large-scale global problem that I can't actually name or YouTube will derank, demonetize and possibly delete this video, plus special shoes for kids with autism, plastic made of prawn shells, baby bears and more. So here we go. But while I have your attention, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I know that some of you have watched maybe two, three, possibly even four of my videos and you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, so now is the perfect chance to do just that. I do two videos a week and four live streams a month at least, so if you like my content then hit that subscribe button right now, I would love to have you. For all of you foreigners who have been asking me the latest on the Australian bushfire crisis, I have good news. The fires are practically kaput. After a brutal fire season which saw 11,200 bush and grass fires, over 2,400 homes destroyed, at least 33 people dead, 5.4 million hectares of land burnt and millions of animals killed, New South Wales, the state worst affected, has officially reported that there are no active fires burning in the state for the first time since July 2019. This is, to state the obvious, absolutely fantastic news given the terrible damage the fires have done. Similarly, the state of Victoria, which was the second most affected, has reported that there are no significant fires still burning, with the last of the big ones finally contained. <laughs> So what saw these fires put out after months of destruction? Well, first and foremost, the absolutely superhuman efforts of firefighters, both Australian and from overseas, and also weeks of very fortuitous rain, which started in February and has continued on and off since then. Not only that, as usual, after bushfires, the landscape is starting to rejuvenate. Grass has started growing again, saplings are taking root, and soon enough, the animals that have been rescued from the flames will be able to return to their habitats. Fantastic news coming out of Australia on this issue. In light of the recent large-scale global event that is changing life as they know it for entire countries worth of people, many changes have had to be made in order to protect public well-being. Now, I'm sure you can all guess what this large-scale global event is, but as I mentioned earlier, I can't actually say the name of it because YouTube will ping me for it, which is very annoying. As such, in the spirit of wordplay and a bit of fun, I have decided to refer to it throughout this video not as the official rather insidious name, but as the much lighter term the beverage bug. Because of the beverage bug, countless public events have had to be cancelled. From sporting matches, to live theatre, to festivals, to the entire tennis tour, which deeply upsets me, people all over the world are being heavily discouraged from congregating in crowds to prevent the bug jumping from person to person, even if it means bucking centuries-old traditions. One of these traditions that has been bucked was, very sadly, St. Patrick's Day celebrations and parades. St. Patrick's Day was March 17th and is usually marked around the world, especially in Ireland of course, by parties, pub crawls and most notably parades. However, this year every St. Pat's Day parade in Ireland, even the small ones, were canned by the government for the sake of public health. Needless to say, this was very emotional for the Irish, given how integral to Irish culture and tradition St. Patrick's Day is. However, in true Irish style, the residents of the Emerald Isle did indeed celebrate St. Pat's Day in an indoors kind of capacity. A combination of creativity and tech savviness allowed people to honour Ireland's national saint while still respecting public health controls and social distancing rules. For example, the world's smallest St. Paddy's Parade was held in Limerick when Lone Piper Paul McMahon marched around the Park Gardens estate in Corbally to keep their 18-year parade tradition alive. I thought we still had to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, so a Lone Piper in the middle of the street wasn't any risk. Everyone kept their distancing by staying inside their own garden, so I think everybody enjoyed it. We have a few bags and celebrate St. Patrick. It's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. When I heard of the captain last night, no. We just decided to do it, you know, and it's great we can't get out of our family like that. It's great to have Fermoy International Choir used camera phones and social media to broadcast a special Irish anthem which it had hoped to perform at the local St. Patrick's Day Parade. And most charmingly, 
Farmers Peter and Paula Hines celebrated St. Patrick's Day at the Ahurla holding in Cork for their children and three veterinary students from the USA and Canada. Not to mention the parents who put together their very own indoors parade for their little ones. So, in the midst of adversity and uncertainty, never let it be said that you can crush the spirit of the Irish. In more beverage bug good news, many strides have been made towards developing a vaccine and finding a treatment or a cure. One of these efforts comes from Australian researchers who say they have found a cure for the bug and hope to have patients enrolled in a nationwide trial by the end of the month. University of Queensland Centre for Clinical Research Director Professor David Patterson stated that they have seen two drugs used to treat other conditions destroy the bug in test tubes and that one of the medications given to some of the first people to test positive in Australia had already resulted in disappearance of the virus and total recovery. Professor Patterson, who is also an infectious disease physician at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital, said it wasn't a stretch to label the drugs a treatment or a cure. And the best news about this is that both the medicines are already registered and available in Australia. The goal is to be enrolling Australians in a trial by the end of March. Fingers crossed they can make this happen. In even more beverage bug good news, it's great to see big companies doing their part. Uber Eats has recently announced that it is going to waive delivery fees for 100,000 restaurants in the USA to ease the financial strain that is heavily affecting the hospitality industry. In addition to this, alcohol distilleries in Atlanta, Portland, rural Georgia and North Carolina are using their facilities to make their own hand sanitizer since there is a national shortage of the stuff and are providing the public with the product for free. For example, Old Fourth Distillery stated on Instagram, Due to the recent reports of outages and low supply in our community, we have decided to provide hand sanitizer free of charge to anyone in need, made with aloe vera gel and 95% ethanol. This is no substitute for washing your hands, but in a pinch, it will get the job done. Available at the distillery starting March 12th at 5pm. If you have a container, please bring it and we will be happy to fill it. Fabulously good deed in these trying times. Another fabulously good deed in light of the beverage bug came from an unnamed gentleman at a restaurant in Ohio. The Coach's Bar and Grill in Columbus had been preparing to close after Governor Mike DeWine ordered all restaurants and bars to limit their services to delivery and takeout options to help protect public health. Although the restaurant owner, Benny Leonard, says that the forced closure may be a cause for concern in his business, he and his employees were very encouraged by a note from one of their regular customers. The customer, a middle-aged man who insisted on remaining anonymous, left a $2,500 tip on a bill of just $29.75. He also asked for the hefty tip to be divided equally among the restaurant's five waitstaff. When the going gets tough, the tough stay loyal. This loyal, amazing patron of Coaches on Bethel left the staff a $2,500 tip to help lighten the losses during this required closing of restaurants and bars in Ohio. Talk about paying it forward, am I right? In other good news, parents of children with autism will be very excited about a new line of shoes from Vans that have been designed specifically for kids with sensory issues. As part of Vans Autism Awareness Collection, the design of the eight pairs of shoes has a focus on soothing the senses through sound, touch and appearance. As children with autism often have trouble tying shoelaces, this new line of sneakers consists of slip-on models and shoes that can be fitted with a single strap hook and loop closure. They have even been designed with a soothing color palette. The company has also pledged to donate a minimum of $100,000 in shoe sale proceeds to the A-Skate Foundation, which is a non-profit company dedicated to teaching children with autism how to skateboard. Great news indeed. In good environmental news, an Australian teenager just may have come up with a solution to the problem of plastic waste. 
17-year-old Angelina Aurora has used prawn shells to create plastic that can decompose in a landfill over an average of only 33 days. Her creation has earned her a BHP Science and Engineering Award, and in 2019, she was named the Australian Geographic Society's Young Conservationist of the Year. Angelina is currently in talks with supermarkets to use her products, and while she is still finalizing the legal aspects like patenting, she is at the stage where she has a final prototype and would be ready to manufacture the plastic to distribute it commercially. And one other bonus of this prawn plastic is that unlike other biodegradable materials, it's not expensive to manufacture and can be put to a variety of uses. Angelina believes it can be used for many different types of packaging because it is transparent, flexible, durable, and insoluble. It can even be used as an agricultural mulch as it releases nitrogen into the soil, which is very, very beneficial for plant growth, health, and immunity. Could Angelina have single-handedly solved the world's plastic pollution problem? Well, she just might have. And finally, in cute animal news, please all of you enjoy this video of a baby bear purring. My phone. Do you hear that? <laughs> that means I'm doing something right. Oh, the cutest sound. What does that mean? She's dreaming. It's actually a bear's purge. It's like a cat purge. When you pet them, it's their happy noise. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Silver Lining series. Let me know what you think in the comments. And until next time, be bright, be safe, and above all, be happy. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my Subscribestar link and other ways you can support me.